and in the, the Buddhist tradition there was a significant uh, protest about too much of the contemplative meditative attitude to the Dharma and there's something of a rebellion against that what emerged and many of you will know this well is the tradition of the Bodhisattva and it's a tradition in which reflection and inquiry and meditation and contemplation certainly deeply valued but not more than compassion not more than the uh, acts of service and so just in the uh, last retreat um, in the space of three days this was uh, in Israel three of the people had to leave the uh, retreat because three relatives, parents in fact, of three different people had been diagnosed with cancer and within a couple of days of joining the retreat had to leave the uh, retreat in order to give support to the uh, person and two of them had only just received the diagnosis and of course that information can be extremely painful and it's a situation one could just stay and sit on the meditation uh, cushion but the heart says and appropriately so, the act of compassion, the going to and the attending to the suffering is the priority and that priority uh, is, as it were, an expression we might call it of the Bodhisattva tradition. <coughs> the Buddha in his uh, 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 teachings of course recognizes and acknowledges that the power of love, metta, the power of a deep friendship and kindness, how it supports and transforms our life, how it deeply nourishes us, as well as the acts of uh, compassion, meaning the action and the activity to relieve suffering. And just recently I had uh, <coughs> Bhikkhu Bodhi, who is the much loved uh, translator of the, many of the discourses of the Buddha wrote an article and kind of squeezing the article down to its bare essence and this is in a very classical orthodox Theravada uh, uh, monk and was expressing concern that sometimes in the tradition and in the vipassana world that some people may be getting the idea that if I just sit on the meditation cushion and do my loving-kindness meditations, my metta meditations then those lovely vibrations will, will transform all those wretched governments uh, uh, out there, enlighten people's lives and transform the world this is called mad optimism and it may just be feeding into uh, a kind of um, uh, ideology of in which in this uh, ideological uh, uh, view that it's a kind of and Bhikkhu Bodhi makes reference to this a kind of middle class comfort zone so that instead of the middle way the middle classes are now ruling I would say and how very easy it is, the feel-good factor if however with loving-kindness metta um, meditations they genuinely give some insight and some empowerment to the heart and really contribute to a much deeper awareness of the support and the necessity and vitality of love and it leads into something in the daily life then every moment of metta meditation, of sitting on the cushion, sharing, generating loving kindness for oneself and others really matters. And what I've been noticing that there's a bit of a trend uh, going on and sometimes that trend is in these guided loving kindness meditations the world of other people and their suffering and their difficulties is gradually sometimes getting forgotten in the language and the metta meditation is all about metta for oneself and well the world, well, well later on and then this sending lots of lots of metta for oneself and then at the end of it as a little add-on, oh yes and, and the others as well may all beings be happy 
And one has to be just a little mindful with these meditations, whether it hasn't got a little flavour of narcissism in it, of kindness for myself, which is important, uh, friendship towards myself, love towards myself, all of that is important. But any exaggeration in one direction isn't actually transforming self to selflessness, but it's wrapping it up in nice, warm, cosy feelings. And something, therefore, is not being seen nor un understood about what it is to be in this world and to be a co-participant. It would seem, <coughs> from the teachings of the Buddha, that a shift, he's tried to make a shift, and rather than moving away to some degree from um, the selflessness which we uh, associate with charitable actions, which we associate with uh, religious sentiments, in both are important of course, and in fact, takes a different point, starting off point. And the starting off point is, what is self? It's not a movement between, from selflessness in various ways, and then back to self, and being with myself, and looking at myself, and uh, being at home with myself, and then forgetting oneself, and then going back to service to others, to karma yoga, to love thy neighbour, and then acts of selflessness. He looks at this whole movement, and particularly, what is self? What is this self? What is the construction of it? What's it made up of? Who am I? What is it to be alive, to be uh, 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 human? And what I'd like to do is just to touch upon some uh, uh, aspects uh, uh, of this and to look at the meaning of non-self in two or three different ways and as always with listening to teachings somehow the shift into exploration into practice into awareness that shift is vital. And the shift which is vital in the exploration is to, for us to look and to see, what, to sense and feel, what is this self, what is this notion of I, which has such an impact and influence uh, on our life, which we use with extraordinary uh, uh, frequency there, and it kind of permeates the inner life the I and the Maya, rising in countless numbers of, of ways. And what we might, you know, I, I, sometimes, I'm, I'm sure you have this experience, as I do. <clears throat> Some people are talking, chat, 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 chat. And one is barely interested, barely interested. But one then just suddenly hears one's name mentioned. <laughs> They're talking about lots of different people and situations and places and then suddenly you're there in the same room or in the same dining hall or in the same living room and suddenly your name is mentioned. And how, from no interest whatsoever, <laughs> there's this moment of, I wonder what they're saying about <coughs> me. And one doesn't care what they're saying about anybody else, but once you hear one's, hear one's name, so it kind of... I won't hesitate to use the word awaken, but it kind of awakens. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of awakens something in, in, uh, 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 inside. And it just reminds us and reflects just how important the construct of the self is to us. And equally important, how important it is to what others think about our self. This self, which is here. And the impact of their views, they may be very supportive and kind, they may be critical and blaming and judgmental or, or whatever, but it seems to, in the, in the landing of the words, or sometimes in, in what we pick up, the person speaks to us or the person doesn't speak to us, we might 
be interpreting their silence in all sorts of ways towards us. <laughs> they may have no reality to it, of course. And in the moment of that, the self can feel quite unsure, insecure, speculating, wondering what they mean by it, and, and that one's whole inner life is then dependent not only on what is coming to the self, oneself, what is coming to it, but equally, what is one interpreting out of it? What are we making out of it? And our happiness, contentment, security, insecurity is, is dependent on external views, which of course can change dramatically, and the internal ones, which equally, and none of it is very, very reliable. I have a, a kind of, sometimes I forget, a kind of agreement with myself that no matter what I hear from anybody about myself, in whatever the circumstances, I try to remind myself, in the moment that I hear it, this is what I'm hearing at this particular time. That's all. It, you know, classic dharma here. It, just, it arises, the voice, or the written word, it stays for whatever length of time, and it passes. And just that this is the voice which is being expressed at this particular time.